Welcome back to our Ghostbusters tutorials. We're, we've got the basic of the game sorted. We've got a ghost appearing at random, random place, random size. We've, we've got the code to catch it, make it disappear when we click it. We've added a sound, which is helpful to know whether we actually caught it or not. And in the spirit of knowing whether we've caught it or not, we're going to add a score. So this is where we introduce variables, which is very important in games. So. Now you're going to make your game more interesting by keeping score. Create a new variable called score. There's a little bit of info about how to create a variable. You click on variables in the code tab, you click make a variable, which is the one here. Now there, there will be a default my variable here, which you can, you can always delete. And then um, you give it a name and you choose whether it's available to all sprites or only this sprite. Um, once you have created the variable, it will be displayed on the stage or you can untick the variable in the scripts tab to hide it. Um, so let's do just that. Variables are what are called carrot, seeing as orange is control. Uh, we've got my variable here. You can that's what they were saying. If you tick untick, you can show it displayed. Make a variables. I'm gonna call it score and I'm going to make it for all sprites in that so far we just have the one sprite, but as there's a the final challenge is to add more ghosts, and although it could be interesting to keep track of the number of time each of the ghosts or bats or whatever enemies have been hit or captured, we want really a total score, so we're just going to have one variable for all sprite called score. Excellent. Don't worry too much about cloud variable. That's, that's just moot. Um, irrelevant. Yeah, okay, so we've done that. That's very good. Um, can you keep track of the player's score? Player should score point when they click on ghost to catch them. Each time a player clicks on the ghost, the score should increase. That's fairly straightforward. Now, we only have the one ghost, but as we have more ghosts, we'll need to extend that code. The capture code is all the stuff that happens when this sprite is clicked. So, so far, we hide the ghost because it's been hit. Immediately, its code disappears, and we play a little sound, space ripple, uh, until done. So, I will want here, I want to change score, change score by one, yeah. Um, and I'm putting this at the beginning because the sound is going to, no, well, it doesn't really matter. So those are, this is very quick, this is almost instantaneous. So is the hide. It's just the sound because it's play sound until done. It means that we stay in that block and we're not running anything until we've done it. We could use start sound, which means it's going to start the sound and then you know, and then continue running the code. But since we don't have any code below our sound block, it doesn't really matter. So let's try that. And now I see that my score has increased to 1. Nope, I've missed them. I'm nailing this. Ooh, sneaky. Okay, that's good enough. I'm happy with that. Um, I need a hint. When the green flag is clicked, your score variable should be set to zero. The stage is the best place to add this code. When the ghost sprite is clicked, the score variable should be changed by one. So I've done the second part, but not the first one. So my score, you see I've stopped playing, and I start a new game and I start with a score of five, which obviously is not good. Now, um, they're quite right that because this is a variable that is valid for all sprites, its initialization technically can happen anywhere, but the stage is indeed the best place to put that because, you know, you want... So here, the initialization we do on the ghost is we, we reset its size to 100% because that's happened on the ghost, but why should the ghost more than the bat be the one that resets the score? It's easier if you're initializing stuff that really pertains, as in applies, is relevant to the whole game, just chuck it all in your, in your stage. The stage is quite practical like that, sort of for things like music, for things like timers and just generally all the code that is not really related to one particular sprite uh, in the game. And we're going to set score to zero here, which means that uh, when I click on the flag that resets the score, the game starts a bit quick. Oh, it's like whack them all. And it's working. And if I stop and when I start again, it resets the score. I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm going to go straight in the next one. Let's add a timer, because this is also variables and stuff. Okay, um, 
we're going to add a timer so the player only has 10 seconds to catch as many ghosts as possible. A new variable called time. So they don't tell us this time, but we'll remember to make a variable. This is for all sprites because that's just the timer. It's not for any of any one of the ghosts. It's just for everything. Um, that's done. Add a timer to the stage. Give your player only 10 seconds to catch ghosts. Start at 10 seconds and count down every second. And the game should stop when the timer gets to zero. Now, that's interesting. So... This is generic code that's for the whole game. Let's put it on the stage. Um, I've got the when the flag is click here. Uh, so when, when we begin the game, we reset the score to zero. We set, we're going to set the timer to 10 seconds. Uh, time to 10. And then there's going to be a... Now we could repeat 10... But since we're going to decrease it, uh, we are going to do repeat until. It's probably a better way to do it. Um, and then we stop all. So that means the game the game ends. Um, what do we repeat until, and what do we repeat until what? We're going to repeat the decrease of the timer. Uh, I'm changing not my variable time by minus one. And I'm going to repeat that until time equals zero. So the um, those test block, you know, something is greater than, smaller than, or you get you can combine those conditions, what we call booleans. That's uh, a type of logic, as in it's either true or false, and you can combine them. and And those are those little hexagons, right? The pointy pointy sides left and right. So we'll repeat until time is equal to zero. And I'm just going to move that in the corner like it was in here. Maybe large readout? Mm. Normal readout. But I'm going to put the score as a large readout because I like the idea of like just having the just having the number. Right, if I start that Uh, yes, of course, I do need <laughs> the, the crucial part of the time. So what's happening here is that it, I click the flag, set scores to zero, set time to 10, and then this is going to run super quickly, and it, it, you know, it's going to run that 10 times, but like in an instant, uh, it's going to reach zero, and it's going to stop all the script and stop the game. So <laughs> I've forgotten that it's 10 seconds, not just 10 iterations or whatever. So we wait one second and change the time by, by minus one. That should, be, that should be a bit better. So we start at 10, 9, 8, 7. And now nothing runs. The, the, the ghost isn't appearing anymore because I have this stop all which is you know, a, a helpful way of stopping everything that is you know, running. And you can stop anything that is this script or the other scripts in this sprite. Um, but we'll stop all. This is where you would you know, put a game over, sort of like the end of the game. You have reached a score of four, new game, you know, whatever. Um, this is advanced stuff that we'll see, I'm sure, in a future video. Uh, okay, so let's see what they're saying. Uh, when the green flag is lit, your time should be set to 10, change by minus 1 every second until it reaches 0. And that's pretty much what I've done, right? Oh, no, I stop all. I didn't look at that before. I'm actually quite happy that this is... We've had the same idea. So those are the blocks with... You'll recognize those blocks. We set, start by setting the time to 10. Then within that loop, we change the time by minus 1 after waiting for 1 second. And we're repeating until the time equals 0. And then after we've repeated all that, we stop all, and this looks like this. When the wind flag is clicked, set time to 10, repeat until time equals zero, wait one second, change time by minus one, and then outside of the repeat loop, stop all, which thankfully is exactly what I've done here. Maybe, yes, I have also the initialization of the score, but because I'm doing it in the same place, but that's, that's the right idea. But now that's not the end of it, because Ask a friend to test your game how many points can they score. If the game is too easy, you can give the player less time. 
make the ghosts appear less often, make the ghosts smaller. Um, I'm quite happy with that. I'll fine tune the game once and the difficulty of the game once I've had all of the, the more sprites, um, which is the final challenge and will be the final video of this tutorial series. I hope to see you there soon.